Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a normal photo into one that looks like the engravings on paper money. There are expensive third-party plugins for this, but I wanted to find an effective solution with the tools we already have in Photoshop and share it with you so you can have fun making your own. So let's begin. I found this bill on the internet by typing in large denomination money. We're going to use Zach Galifianakis in our place of honor. Whatever photo you choose, it should be a black and white halftone and it should be able to fill your screen clearly. If you start with a color photo, just press Control U or Command U on a Mac and slide the saturation down all the way. Then you're good to go. Let's get in closer to our area, so we'll grab the magnifying tool and then click and drag down. And then we'll choose the elliptical marquee tool. Click on the center of the oval frame while holding down Alt or Option on the Mac. Then drag out until the selection is closely matched to the inside of the frame shape. If you need to move the entire selection, hold down the space bar. To remove the concave shape at the bottom, just do what you did before. Press Alt or Option on a Mac and drag out. Hold down the space bar if you need to move it around. Press the letter Q to see the quick mask and Q again to return it to the selection. Press the layer mask button to make the selection into a layer mask. And then Control J or Command J on a Mac to make a copy. We won't need the bottom layer mask so unlock it and throw it away. We're going to fill the inside of the frame with a similar color and texture of the lighter parts of the bill. Press the letter I to call up the eyedropper tool and then click down on a light area of the bill. Make sure the dollar layer is active and then press Alt Delete or Option Delete on a Mac to fill it with the color you just chose. Then press Control J or Command J on a Mac to make a copy of it. We're going to reverse the foreground and background color, so just press on the little double arrow or press the letter X. Then press on the new foreground color and the color picker window will come up. Type in 61645C, sort of like a dark grayish color. Then go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. We'll add another filter, Noise, and then Add Noise. This will open the Add Noise window. The amount is 5% and it's Gaussian Distribution and Monochromatic. We're going to add one more filter. Go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. This will open the Gaussian Blur window. Type in 0.5 pixels. Go to the Layers panel and adjust the opacity to 50%. Press Ctrl L or Command L on a Mac to open the Levels window. We're going to adjust the inside of the frame to kind of match the contrast and brightness of the background. Press Ctrl E or Command E on a Mac to merge the two layers together. Click on the build to make it active and then press Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac to make a copy. We'll call up the magnifier by pressing the letter Z. We're going to get rid of the name Chase on the banner. Press B to get the brush and Q to paint in a quick mask. We're going to make a selection of the inside of the banner so choose whichever method you prefer. Press Q to make it into a selection again and then Control shift i or Command shift i on a Mac to invert it. Get the eyedropper tool, click on the banner, press B for brush, and start painting in the banner. We're now ready to work on Zach himself. We created a new layer pressing on the New Layer button, and then press Control delete or Command delete on a Mac to fill it with white. Then go to the layer mask of the oval frame and click down as you press Control on a PC or Command on a Mac. This will call up the layer mask as a selection. Go to the top layer and click on the eyeball to make it active. Go to Select, Transform Selection, and this will call up the transform, or you could just simply press Ctrl T or Command T on a Mac. Click on a corner while you're holding the Shift key and just pull out. The reason we're making the oval frame large is because the quality of our final image of Zach will be much better working at this size and then reducing it down as opposed to working on Zach's face at the original smaller size. 
To establish the basis of our steel engraving, we're going to create a grid of horizontal lines. We'll create a new document, click File and New. We'll keep the resolution the same at 72 pixels per inch, and we'll keep the height and width at 6 pixels. Press the letter Z for the magnification tool, and then M for the marquee tool. Drag halfway across and press Alt Delete or Option Delete on a Mac to fill it with black. Press Ctrl D or Command D on a Mac to get rid of the selection. Go to Edit and Define Pattern. We'll name this 6 pixels. We'll open our original Photoshop file and make sure we have a new layer with white as a background. Double click it to open its layer style window. Click on Pattern Overlay and the arrow next to Pattern. If you click on the last box, that'll open the 6 pixel grid we created. Go to the Layers panel and click on New Layer. Press Ctrl Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac to fill this layer with a screenshot of the grid. We'll rename it 6 pixel lines. Go to Filter Distort Wave. This will open up the Wave dialog window. The number of generators is 5. The wavelength is about 170 each. The amplitude is about 218 each. The horizontal scale is 34% and the vertical scale is 8%. The type is Sine and we'll choose Repeat Edge Pixels. By changing any one of these numbers, we'll change the look of our wave. Press Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac to make a copy. We'll change the top layer's mode from Normal to Multiply. We're going to create a moiré pattern. Press the down arrow key twice and the right arrow key twice. We'll change the mode of both wavy lines to Overlay. Press on the top layer, hold shift, and press on the layer below it. We'll slide the two wavy layers together as we find a moiré pattern of Zack's face that we like. Control click or command click on Zack to call up his selection. Make sure the top layer is active and click on the layer mask button. Now control click or command click on that layer mask to call up the selection again. Activate the second wavy line layer and click on the layer mask button. To save some time, I put the engraving of Zack on its own layer and called up the small oval frame as its layer mask. And directly below that is the image of the bill that's ready to accept Zack's face. To save time, I already covered some of the figure in this bill using the clone stamp tool. The reason for this is because we want to ensure that any parts of this figure won't be seen when we place Zack in the frame. Click on the chain link to unlock Zack from his layer mask and click on the eyeball to make that layer visible. Press Ctrl T or Command T on a Mac to call up the transform. Click on a corner of the transform while you press down on Shift and drag it inward to size and position Zack's face. To accept it, press the arrow at the top or enter or return on a Mac. Go to the layer that has the light background inside the small oval frame and make it visible. Control click or command click on a Mac on the layer mask to call up the selection. Then press on the image to make it active. And then press Control J or Command J on a Mac to cut it out and place it on its own layer. We'll move that layer up directly below Zack's face. We'll change the mode of Zack's face from normal to multiply. We're now ready to type in his name. Click on the Type tool and open up the Character window. We're going to use Legal Tender as the typeface, which you can download for free at urbanfonts.com. We'll choose 11 points and we'll type it out coming from its center. Click on the center of the banner and type out his last name. Highlight his name with the Type tool click on the color at the top next to the type tool and click on black. Click on the warp text button and that'll open up the warp text window. 
click on style and choose arc then slide the bend scale down to about 26 percent and then just move the type in position so here is our final Zach Galifianakis ten thousand dollar bill this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV thanks for watching